So Dragon Ball Sparking Zero has just released, and already people are just absolutely loving this game. I haven't seen a lot of hype and a lot of people just happy for a AAA game like this in such a long time. Usually games releasing nowadays, they always end up as like live services that try to sell you battle passes and skin bundles like Call of Duty and Fortnite does, for example. But with games like Dragon Ball Spark and Zero, they basically just, in a nutshell, they bitch slapped those games in the face and they tell everyone, hey, this is what a good game is supposed to be like. This is how you make a AAA $70 game the right way. Especially because all the content is there day one. You don't need a roadmap to see what's coming into the game. No, once you pay your money for this game, you get all the content. Like, all the fun stuff is there for you once you get into the game and play it. Especially because a lot of this stuff usually would be like DLC, especially on a game for this scale. But the developers of Dragon Ball Spartan Zero decided to take it further and said, no, this is all available for you day one. You get your, your story mode, you get your custom battles, your, your standard battles, you get a massive character of rosters. I think there's like over 180 something characters in the roster. Which is absolutely bananas. I haven't seen a roster that big since like Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. And that game had at least like 100 fighters in the whole roster. But even then man, like people are just absolutely happy with this game. And it, like I've said already, it's just so rare to see a good AAA game like this. I think the last good AAA game that I can think of was probably Elden Ring from, like, 2022. And I don't even like Souls-like games, but even I enjoyed Elden Ring. But besides from that, I mean, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, like, people are just mind-blown at how massive, like, the game is. Especially when it comes to, like, the story. Like, the fact that there are now what-if scenarios in this game... Like, people are excited. Like, they can finally see, like, oh, hey, what would happen if Goku went Super Saiyan against Raditz? And then, what would happen if Goku went Super Saiyan against Great Ape Vegeta, for example? Or, what would happen if Jiren won the Tournament of Power against Goku? Or, what would happen if Vegeta and Trunks defeated Cell at the Cell Games? The story alone for this game, people are just loving it, especially because you can either choose to go down the what-if paths and see what would happen if you took a different outcome, or you can stick with the canon path and stick with what happened during the whole Dragon Ball anime. You know what I'm saying? No pun intended. I don't know why I said you know what I'm saying there. I, I did not mean for that pun to go in there, but I digress. But anyway... The next thing I want to talk about is the custom battles. Now, this is something that really interests me because I love getting creative. I love building stuff in terms of whether it be making maps or different battle scenarios. But custom battles, it, it looks like something I might be interested in. There are so many people that just went hog wild and they just decided to make some of the most either ridiculous battles that's like impossible to beat or they decide to make their own like easy battles and see like oh hey beat a certain amount of enemies and see if you can win or try to beat this really powerful enemy with these modifiers that can heal themselves over time for example and you got to see if you can beat those and I think that's like a really cool thing for the Dragon Ball community especially because it's giving people more variety and it's giving people some of those extra challenges like oh hey if the base game is too easy then why don't you try some of these challenges that we made and you can even have some of your friends try to do th some of those custom battles you made like oh hey if you think the story mode's too easy why don't you try out the custom battle i made that's like really impossible and see if you can beat it and I, I can already imagine this right now. There's going to be some impossible battles that will make people go crazy. 
I know I'm going to go off track here for a second, but I heard a lot of people complaining about how impossible or how hard the Great Ape Vegeta battle is for, like, the story mode, and people are just going absolutely insane because it's, like, too hard. Which, I get it, you know, there are some battles that are supposed to be challenging, but, I mean, that's the whole point of, like, Dragon Ball. It's meant to be challenging, and you're meant to go up against these, like, really tough enemies. Which kind of brings me up to my next point, like, the roster. Like, there are some characters in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero that are obviously meant to overpower some of the other fighters. Like, let's say Jiren against Krillin, for example. Because obviously Jiren, wow, I'm stuttering on my words. Because Jiren is obviously supposed to be one of the toughest fighters in all of Dragon Ball. And Krillin is one of the weakest. But, I mean, a lot of people really enjoy Krillin, which I get it. But even then, like... I, it feels like that the developers try to make this game, like, show, like, their power. Like, oh, yeah, this is how weak some of these characters are, and this is how strong some of these characters are. I can imagine people just scrolling through the roster and just trying to see, like, okay, what would happen if, let's say, Yamcha went up against someone like Kefla and see how weak Yamcha really is? Or let's say, what would happen if Krillin went up against someone like, let's just say, Whis? And let's see how weak Krillin really is or how strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can see people just spending hours on end just going through the roster and just trying to... Either do experiments and see what works so they can put it in their custom battles or they can just mess around with the roster for the funsies and they can just see what would happen if they put these fighters up against each other. Like I can imagine just the amount of time people will put into this game just because of how big the roster is and how creative they can get with their custom battles and i can imagine a lot of people replaying the story for the what if scenarios and all that just the amount of content in dragon ball spark and zero it's just absolutely mind-blowing i haven't seen the a lot of content i stuttered on my words there jesus christ i haven't seen a lot of content for a game like this since like Baldur's gate 3 and i'm still playing through Baldur's gate 3 and I'm still in, like, the first area of the game. But even then, man, like, Dragon Ball Spark and Zero, this feels like the Dragon Ball game that a lot of people really wanted. And this is, like, one of the greatest Dragon Ball games that a lot of people have played in such a long time. Now, personally, I want to get Dragon Ball Spark and Zero because it looks like a really good game. And I really enjoy Dragon Ball games. But... I'm kind of hesitant for like the $70 price tag, but for Dragon Ball Spark and Zero, I might make an exception for that game. I'm probably missing out by just waiting for a price drop, and I'm probably missing out by just waiting for the game to either, I don't want to say have a physical copy, because obviously there are physical copies out there, but... I'm probably missing out on just waiting for a price drop, whether it be for physical copies or digital copies. But even then, like, I, I'm i probably going to make a one-time exception for this game because it looks like something I would probably play for the rest of the year. But anyways, I figured I'd get on here and make this video because it just... It's just great to see a game like this just pop off and be successful. And stuff like this is so rare in today's dark age of modern gaming. So I figured I'd get on here and talk about this. So with this being said, thank you everyone for watching and for listening. I don't know if I'll have a video up by next week. I do have some stuff going on for the rest of October. So I don't think I'll probably have another video up by the end of the month. So I might take the rest of October off depending on how things go. But yeah, even then, man, like, I, I just figured i talk about this game and give you folks a heads up on my game plan. So, with this being said, thank you all for watching and for listening. I apologize for rambling, and until next time, I'm talking about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, 
and I'll see you all later.